Hey, people, Philip Blank here, and today on Started Up, we have with us a Land Rover Defender 90X. Now, the 90 model versus the 110 is the wheelbase, whether it's two or four door, coming in at 101 inches as opposed to 120 with the 110. Uh, this is in the Pangea green, and the X package on it is the black accents, the black hood, roof, wheels, and all of that to go along with it. Now, a confusing part of the Land Rover models is they have all the different packages and then the different models on top of that. So you have your base model Defender, then you have your X-Dynamic model, and then you have the X model. And then within those models, you can get a bunch of different packages, whether it's the S, the SE, and that HSE, and that's kind of changing what engine is put in the vehicle. Um, along with the shocks, a couple other accessories, what comes stock on it. Now the X model comes with the dynamic air suspension and then it comes with a lot of the premium upgrades automatically put into it so you don't have to add them on. At first I was not really a fan of this car when it came out. I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe not. But after having driven it for a while, it's become one of my favorite vehicles to drive, just the overall feel of how everything is. Now, definitely with the base aluminum wheels and some of the uh, other colors or say a white roof, I think this thing can go beyond and I'm not even interested in it. But with the X package and all the black accents, I really think it cleans up nicely and it has a really elegant silhouette. Now with this being a Defender, Land Rover is cutting ties and they have really no intention of bringing back the ladder style, legendary Defender of the past. That's a 40 year old model and with this, they're kind of stepping into the future saying, this is what we want a capable SUV to be. It's not as rugged off-road as those at all, but it's still very capable. Now today, we're not gonna be taking this thing through its paces or any of the off-road capabilities. It's purchased more as a road car. That's its daily use. But if you're willing to take it off-road, it does have all the capabilities of the all-wheel drive, the locking diffs, the deeper fording heights. Um, a lot of those extra packages, just to say it's an off-road vehicle, I doubt you'll see too many uh, in, the, in the overall sale of these cars being pushed to their limits. Now one other addition on the X package is the engine, which is the P400 engine from Jaguar Land Rover Paired. Um, it is a MH EV, which is a mild hybrid vehicle, which is a turbocharged inline straight six, but it also has an electronically controlled supercharger. Right when you take off the hybrid supercharger, is what will instantly start spooling for you, get the air pushed in, and then the turbo takes over. This thing has 395 horsepower and it has 408 pound-feet of torque. It also has a eight-speed automatic, which comes standard across all of the different packages. So starting up with the engine, latch here in the middle, easy to lift, nothing special to look at. And one thing, your battery is in the rear underneath the jack, uh, but you do have access up here for jumping. To me, the front kind of has a silhouette of like a uh, lizard, kind of like a Komodo dragon. Get those square lights, kind of like the eyelid. But not a bad overall look. Now your fording depth is 900 millimeters. It's about, uh, I think like what, 35 inches or so along the edge. Now a lot of the cars will come with the package to have the little inlay cargo inserts. And then you have an outdoor exterior flip out where you can put some more like kind of like a toolbox. But I think the silhouette looks quite a bit better just with the all black sleek sides. Um, in addition, you have this top window here running along and then that's extra light on the interior. Now all over, you do have cameras hidden in the mirror. You have camera on the roof. You have sensors all along, along the edges. So that is your backup reverse camera on the roof there. And then the lights all go matte. There's no color on them. Now, one thing I love about this vehicle is since it's all completely new, they just put so much effort, you can tell, into thinking about finding spots for stuff built in. So right here, you have the little hazard triangle to set on the road, made by Jaguar, since they're the same company together. That's built into your back there. In the rear, you do have your fuses all tucked away in there. You have a standard 110 outlet here, 180 watts. And then on the left side, underneath my gloves here, you got your 12 volt cigarette lighter style. And the seats do completely flip down. There's a button up on the edge, You'll grab. Then you got a bit of space in here for hauling. Um, underneath my bag here, you have a floorboard pops up and in there is where the jack is. Underneath that, 
your battery, a couple other components there. Uh, one interesting thing on this, um, you have a raise and lower. So this has to do with your suspension system. So I'm holding it right now, the car is going up completely. That is for your hitch. The car gives you about two or three inches of lift. Just holding this button and that will allow you to raise up into your ball like that. The rear end is completely lifted up and then now you can easily hook up a trailer, drop the jack there, lower it back down. But yeah, the door is very heavy, so it's got a lot of weight to it. Now we've done an overview of the outside, let's go ahead and get inside and start this baby up. You have the beautiful, one of my favorite color combinations for this car, the vintage tan and ebony matched with the Pangea green. You have a little bit more of a rugged look with the exposed uh, torque screws there on the door. You have a lot of skeletonized features around, kind of like here you have just the outer frame. You have that going on down below where you have a hole you can kind of drop through. I'm a lot more exposed. It kind of gives it a little more truck of a feel compared to the, the smooth, complete of its standard uh, Range Rover. And then the rear does have a bench seat, can fit adults, um, and it's a little bit hard to access getting in and out when you pull up to a rear destination. So to open up the rear, you do have to click this forward button. That'll get you sliding. And since it's on a screw system, it's definitely not quick. Um, so that kind of stings having to wait for that. Once it does get forward, you can flip down the seat and then you have to climb in and out of this hole. Not the best for kids, no problem. But same class as say a two door Jeep, have a lot more space here in the rear. And then you have the full overhead skylight, little accent windows along the top of the roof on the sides there. Now again, that ebony and black runs all the way through the interior. You have the accent threads on the floorboards, kind of allowing that change in color. And you have the wood accents thrown throughout the vehicle itself. Now one really interesting aspect of this car, going again for the off-road feel, there is no cloth other than the floor mat inserts. So underneath all your floor mats is plastic. That means if you have mud or anything spilled, there's nowhere for it to go other than onto that base. We'll go ahead and put our seat back, slide it rear. You have to hold it, kind of an annoying feature. Should be an auto, but it's not. So same in the front, all plastic except for the pins of where your cloth floor mats go in, take those out, scrub them, shampoo them. But yeah, definitely an interesting decision there. And honestly, it's pretty nice going along with the entire package of being a little more rugged. So we'll go ahead and sit in here. But here on your control panel, first off, you do have a shifter. I liked it a lot more than the knobs on the Range Rover. It gives you a little bit more tactile. Um, this is equipped if you have the air ride suspension. It allows it to go up or down. You have an access height for say washing and doing some of the things on the roof. So this has a full winter package. You have a heated front windshield. You have your defrost air and then a rear defrost as well. This is switching between your different drive modes. So when you click that on, you'll swap between your gravel, snow, comfort. All of those settings are in this knob. And then when you click on this one, it's allowing you to set the fan speed of your air conditioning. Now, a great part of being a newer car, you have USB-C all throughout the vehicle and you still have a USB standard, USB-A there. Uh, right here is a 12 volt. Now the feature this car has is the wireless charging. You set your phone there. I still prefer plugging things in, get your Apple CarPlay and Android CarPlay as well. Now onto the steering wheel, you don't have any rear controls back here for volume. It's all up on the top. This car has heated steering wheel. Um, you also have adaptive cruise control there, kind of your lane assists, this is setting your distance between your uh, pacing, and then this is your high speed limiter. Now it is gonna be flickery a little bit on the computer, but this is a very elegant and clean, calm system. I love how the color works well with the car. It's very clean, it's very responsive for a touchscreen. You just have so much capability in the car, uh, things like your cameras all around you. So you can pick what angle you wanna be looking at here. So that's a little bit neat. You can see my entire surroundings. That's super awesome. Useful? Eh, probably not. But 
it's there. So you're showing your diff locks, you're running on your edges. You can see uh, towing cameras if you want to look back behind you for backing up. Um, but really cool feature. Uh, you have phone, your 4x4 intelligence. So kind of just tracking right now we're on an angle. There's just so many different pages to go through on this car and just the interface is so clean and sleek. So we'll go ahead and start this baby up. Now, if you can barely hear the engine, that is fully intentional. This thing is incredibly quiet and smooth, and even the acceleration is just... It's very fluid for the acceleration. Now, we have got a bit of a rainy day here, which is coming from London, the perfect environment for this Land Rover. Um, right when you drive this thing, I think the first response of a lot of people is how smooth it is. And the engine that we talked about earlier with the 395 has got the turbo and super on it. And all that mass behind it, it's really got no issue uh, handling it. Uh, your takeoff speed, brakes are a little bit touchy there. Your takeoff speed, I mean, for an SUV, pretty quick. Now the 0 to 60 on this is 5.7 seconds. So this car is by no means light. Coming in at 3,800 pounds, it's going to use all 395 of that horsepower to kind of get you launched. And now fuel tank, we do have about a 23 gallon tank of approximately 90 liters. Um, and that will give you a range between 450 and 500, about 30 miles. Uh, we get about 20 miles per gallon in this uh, combined. Uh, average probably going to be more 18, 19 from what I've seen, but it's not too bad for what it is. Now the visibility in this thing is a lot better than I would have expected with the way the windows are set up. You don't have much of the A-pillar blocking out your view. Uh, you have a pretty flat windshield in the front and sides with your side windows. And then in the rear, there is a rather thick pillars back there, but you do have the uh, large, the tall mirrors, which really help uh, kind of showing that blind spot. And when you put it in reverse, the mirrors automatically flip down since your wheelbase is so short, it flips down so you can see your wheels as you're backing up. You do still have the blind spot monitors along with your rear view camera, which is up on the roof pointing back, showing here in the mirror. Now running all the time, not just in cruise control, is your lane assist. So you have your heads up display projecting right through here, and on it is telling you your speed. It has a little speed limit sign telling me what the top speed is. And it also has uh, your lane control. So it'll tell me in green or white uh, when it sees and when it's engaged. And then it'll automatically kind of bounce itself like that, uh, keeping you in the center. It does a really good job. You don't have to be in cruise control for that. Um, so you feel it kick in here and there, but I, I think that's a nice little feature. The air ride suspension on this thing, like right now we're on gravel. You can kind of hear it, but it is incredibly smooth, especially just with the kind of larger bumps like there. It eats it up pretty well. Now Range Rover did say they have the capability of putting 35 inch tires on this, but you do have to put it on a one inch lift. I'm gonna imagine you don't wanna put an aftermarket lift if you already have the X with the air ride suspension. Uh, maybe that's a better option with the coilover, so maybe a deterrent from the X model. I think this car does a really great job of taking your mind off the road. You just get a ride in it really doesn't make you focus on the car itself. The comfort, the quietness, the audio just kind of leaves that all behind. So it lets you drive in peace and then gets you there reliably. Now Land Rover has a large market share for the luxury SUV and this car does not disappoint. With the, the heft and the weight and the quality and finish of the materials, uh, just the doors themselves, they're so heavy uh, and normally lighter is better, less to do, less weight. They just feel solid, like the hinge grips, grips incredibly well, and it just handles it. That's just one of the many aspects of this car that really, even though it feels like, you're like oh, it's a Jeep, why would I pay 85,000 for a Jeep? And it's that quality and craftsmanship that lets you know that this isn't a Jeep.
Now, if you've driven a Wrangler for the longest time in Consumer Reports, they had some of the lowest ratings of a car just for the road noise, for the sway, for how it feels, for the quality. It just did not bring up. Wranglers are getting better and better, especially with the newer Gladiators. Uh, they're really focusing on that fit and finish. But this is just in its own completely different class, and it really does a great job for what it's trying to accomplish. And that's all we got here today on the Land Rover Defender X. Great car, a lot of fun to drive, and just really brings all the premiumness that comes from the Range Rover line. and brings it into kind of a little more of a Jeep package with the short wheelbase, um, just a two-door with the rear bench seat in the back. One of my favorite things just to be able to get to drive and kind of get out on the road. So let me know if you got any questions or comments down below on anything we didn't cover or maybe did cover and I got wrong. Happy to be corrected. Um, but if you got any questions, just let me know. Reach out. I'll be happy to get back with you. And that's all I got for you today. Peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.